Well, um, I think I told you last week that um, this is not really, uh, being an abstract expressionist is not really me being an illustrator. We don't disconnect. So I always like to paint things that look like things, and this is a way into becoming a bit more abstract. So I sent you this photo. I just also recently sent you uh, this morning the rule of thirds, which is useful for composition. Um, and uh, we will get onto that in a minute. But first, I would like to uh, show you why I'm very keen on, um, not so much Kandinsky on him, uh, George O'Keefe. Go girl. She's one of the few world famous 20th century women artists, uh, which is why she's so famous. She was very cunning. I think she married a man and ended up with stepchildren and went to New Mexico and stayed there <laughs> just to do art. So that was very clever of her. Um, and I also sent you Mondrian's trees because you think about how severe his abstract uh, paintings are and where he came from. He was painting almost in the style of, I don't know, Van Gogh to lose the trek uh, before the war and then he just, you know, everybody talked about <clears throat> becoming an abstract artist, so they all beavered away to try and find their way in. But he took originally the idea from natural forms. So I just wonder, there was a lovely exhibition of Georgia O'Keeffe's work a couple of years ago in London. And I just want to show you a couple of her things, because she's contemporaneous with um, Mondrian, more or less. Uh, so uh, I think in the 1920s, uh, Kandinsky published this book concerning the spiritual and art, how to go abstract. Um, and she starts out, <clears throat> I mean, she was a conventional artist, but then she starts out uh, trying to paint music, which is a hard thing to do, but uh, Kandinsky was a synesthete. Uh, so she did these rather severe charcoal drawings before she felt she could use color again. So these are, and these are taken from things but they're just the way they're framed. They are, they become abstract. This is her painting music. Um, and then she did, of course, what she's famous for are her enormous flowers, but you have to realize these are about 10 foot by 10 foot. So she's making the small large, so you look at it again. And of course they're really popular because everybody likes a nice flower. And then here, I told you about, uh, this is the sky through a pelvis bone. So you're getting this wonderful delicate shape, which she's painted uh, with lumps and bumps on it, uh, <clears throat> but it's, it's abstracting it, it's a framing device. Um, and then she did a lot of landscapes, which are great. She bought herself a piece of New Me Mexico. And, then, and again, she would go realist sometimes and then abstract sometimes else. But later in life, because she lived to a ripe old age, <clears throat> she started flying everywhere. And these are like abstract paintings inspired by being up in an aeroplane. There's that very famous one. Am I right? There's that very famous one uh, of the clouds. Is that at the end here? Oh, I don't say it's not here. The clouds. This is about 12 foot by 6 foot. I mean, it's absolutely enormous, but it gives you an idea of being above those clouds. And these are kind of rivers and things, but abstracting it, <clears throat> not making it realistic. Uh, right. Now, as I say, I have to, a lot of people can just paint what's in their head, which is really hard, uh, or uh, just go really abstract. But in fact, I always have to have a reference. I have to have it go through the artistic bit of my brain before I can even think about it. So I sent you the photograph of this setup I had done some time ago. Um, and then I cropped it and cropped it until I found a, a good image. Um, so one useful thing to have lying around in your studio, these are just old mount boards cut in half, two L-shaped pieces of card, is to uh, use those to find compositions that you like. Ooh, is that even better? Mm. And then you can actually figure out what you want to paint. And I think when you come across, across a composition that you like, they're going, woo, that's good. I think it's because it's probably uh, applying, to, uh, it's conforming to the rule of thirds, uh, which is very big in photography. It used to be very big in art, but everybody's thrown any rules out a long time ago. It might come back, you never know. <clears throat> 
So the rule of thirds, let me just turn that over so it's not so distracting, is uh, basically the A, uh, this is an A piece of paper, this is A4 obviously, um, and uh, the ratio of the A system of paper is 1 to 1.6. So this is 1. Get a pen, get a pen. <clears throat> so this is 1, and that's 1.6. And this is known also as the ratio of beauty. This is probably why it works. So when you're taking photographs or uh, going through your photographs, you know you, when you've got a good photograph, it's probably because it's, um, it's conforming to the rule of thirds. There's all sorts of videos around about them. But the idea is that uh, you bisect this by thirds, obviously, and then you have these nodes of interest, but you don't want to have them all over the place. You don't want to use them all because then that will be too busy. Often when you're doing a photograph, you would have your main interest here and then out here would be blank or um, more landscapey bits. There's quite a good one on the internet with a dog here and then all sorts of lovely landscape behind it. So you, you don't want to have things too central or too uh, symmetrical. So I just wanted to draw your attention to the rule of thirds. You might find your camera or your iPhone camera will actually bring it up for you sometimes. Uh, <clears throat> but it's just a thing to have in the back of your head so that you know when you've got a good photo or a good composition. So I messed around with uh, this photo and had a bit of a crop. And I actually printed out, oh, sorry, that's a photo. <coughs> And then I cropped it down to that. Now I don't like that. I don't know why I don't like that, but I don't like that. So I cropped it again. And I much prefer this. I don't know why it is. I think it might be because it's too busy. If I had a, uh, if I could squash it up a bit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you, um, I think you know when you've got a good one. And it's probably because it's a, um, conforming to the rule of thirds. So to paint this picture, I had a bit of a scribble. Um, I just used a pencil. I put in my rule of thirds to see if anything was conforming to it. What's happening, it's got a kind of quiet area here. Everybody says you should have a kind of quiet area of your painting. And I think this is why it's working. There's a kind of interest there with the rocks colliding. Uh, but this is quiet. I think that's why I prefer this photo to the other photo. So I had a bit of a scribble just to see if it would work. You don't have to do that. And then I've got my red acrylics here. I mean, my red acrylic ground. This is just the back of an old painting board. I've divided up in rule of thirds. I don't know if that's helping, but... Um, <clears throat> and then I'm just going to have a bit of a scribble and try and get the elements down. Now, remember, you're going to be painting over this so don't worry about it. Um, I don't know if you're going to do this uh, one, are you? Yeah? Oh, let's give it a go then. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, I'm just going to look at where, this is actually a propeller, a propeller, as you can see. Um, I'm just going to look where that goes into here. And in fact, what you could do, which I haven't done, uh, so I've actually gridded this up, if you grid that up too, with thirds, uh, you could probably transfer the picture easier, but I haven't done that, and we're pressed for time. So that's the way you can reproduce things accurately. If you grid up your image and grid up the painting, your uh, your painting surface, you can then actually just, uh, maybe I'll try it, you can just, I'm just gonna draw this square, and then I'm just gonna draw that square. It's almost like when we're doing the big picture as well. Uh, so I'm coming down here, and I'm just looking where that is in relation to everything else. Uh, it's coming down here. You don't have to be that accurate. It's, I'm just using this for inspiration, really, to make a painting. Um, I'm not going to think about every little uh, you know, fleck of rust on here or whatever. I'm just going to try and... I think that's there. <laughs> Got lost already. So let's take that down there. So I'm just using a 5B pencil. And that's coming up here, and then we got one in front of it, which is kind of that shape. Um, and then, oops, it's coming down here, and then we got this nice pebble with the circular band on it. 
So I'm just plotting out the elements I want in this painting. I've got that pesky shell as well. So I'm, going down there. I'm going to simplify the shell into kind of a cone. And I do recommend looking up the works of Georgia O'Keeffe uh, because she has done some lovely things with a sort of close landscape and far landscape and flowers and skulls and all sorts of other different things. Right, and then I'm just going to put in, this is a fisherman's ball, just looking at where it comes. So I'm just looking at where it comes within the frame and it's sort of there. sort of a circle and that's coming around there <clears throat> and then I want to put my stripes in because they're kind of dynamic lines so they go sort of like this I'm not worried too much about the wrinkles on the curtains I'm just trying to draw through things and that's there and that's there we think and then I could think about putting in these dimples yeah. That's there, and there's one here, one here. I'm going to be painting over this anyway, but so I have a general idea. Can you see what's going on there? Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, just for the people who aren't familiar with the Stay Wet palette, I was just going to demonstrate how to make one. So this is kitchen towel. <coughs> this is grease proof paper proof baking paper or, or silicon paper or baking parchment uh, this is this the reason why you use that is that it's quite tough the fibers will not break up when you'll start poking around with paint and then I put that on there I cut it cut them out to fit the palette which is always useful and then I'm just going to add a bit of water not too much and I'm just going to slosh that around right, that's not enough just so the whole thing is damp. You don't want it sopping wet, but damp is good. There. And of course, this is plenty kitchen towel. And that's the one that does what it says on the tin. There we go, that's all damp. So, and then I put my greaseproof paper on top. And ah, a stay wet palette. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do first is get some black on the go. And I'm just going to paint around my big shapes that I made. Ah. Black. Yeah. Oh, I need some black. Oh. That's green. Black. <coughs> And I'm just going to use a round brush and just go around uh, my pencil marks, but mainly. And not worrying about being neat because you'll be painting over things. I'm going to take a round brush. Oh, a better round brush than that. What about that round brush? This round brush. So it's just a big old brush. And just add a bit of water. Uh, just to uh, get the paint to flow better. And then I'm going to... Just yes, paint round my shapes. So that will be my palette to start with which you can't see. Uh, <clears throat> so I've got a bright red. I've gone for, this is cadmium red, supposedly. This is uh, some sort of yellow. I think it's lemon yellow. Uh, yes, that's lemon yellow. So it's a bit more acidic than the other ones. I've got uh, phthalo blue, phthalo green, and burnt umber. And my, dish, my little bit of black I squeezed out earlier, which I might save for later. And while I've been waffling on, that is more or less dry, apart from that bit, which I should have painted first. But I'm sure by the time I get to it, that too will be dry. So I'm going to tackle doing the propeller. 
And thinking about it, I probably do want that black. So I'm just going to move that black to here. And then perhaps use that as a mixing palette. And then I'm going to take, hmm, I wonder if that would work. I've got quite a stiff bristle brush here that's a bit knackered, which will obviously affect the marks I make. So I'm going to try using that and see what happens. So I'm just going to mix up uh, some grey. I just want to go on here and splodge it on. So I think the reason why I can't do abstracts and I wasn't a fine artist at all uh, is the fact I do like to refer to things. I find if I'm not, if it's not going through the artistic part of my brain, it's just not working generally. So I'm just going <clears> to <throat> actually refer to the picture, but not be too slavish towards it. But I do want to have the idea of different colours coming in here and splodging around. Splodge, splodge, splodge. Ooh, look at that. And then I'm not going to clean my brush. I'm going to pick up a bit of red and see what happens. It turns us a kind of yicky, yicky colour. No, oh, that was a bad idea. <coughs> I am going to clean my brush. I'm going to dry my brush. So with acrylics, I find it very helpful when you clean your brush is to dry it so you're not slopping more water into your acrylics because I think you might know that I do prefer to use acrylics thickly. A lot of people do like doing washes. And here am I painting red on a red background. Yeah, let's have a little bit of that going on. Yeah, so I'm just painting that in. And while it's wet, it will blend. I'm trying to figure out if I like this brush or not. It is leaving, because it's kind of, it's a stiff brush to start with and it's a little bit knackered. So it is leaving brush marks, but do I like the brush marks? I don't know. So I'm coming in here. Oh, that grey was still wet. And over here. Just plonk it on and, and realising that I can add more later if necessary. And a bit over here. That is all still wet. Usually I'm cursing acrylics that they dry too quickly, but I think I'd like to dry even quicker. So I think I'm going to pass through and try and do some sort of underpainting and then uh, add some more areas later. I can bring back that red and the grey. Actually, that's more grey, so I'm just going to pick up a bit of white and splodge it in. Oh god, it's gone pink. So I'm just going to add some more... Yeah, we need more grey in our lives, I think. So I'm just going to add a bit more grey up here. And it's actually mixing with the paint underneath. So I'm trying to keep my brush strokes staccato. That's a phrase, isn't it? And then I think I'm going to try and have a little bit of yellow. I'm going to mix it with burnt umber. Well, that's really not working. And I'm going to add a bit of white to it. I'm only doing this because I've run out of yellow. <laughs> so I just want to plonk on some, some of those shapes. And the useful thing about using a stay wet palette is hopefully those colours will survive. They will stay damp and that keeps the paint active. And that means the colours will survive uh, for when I want to come back and actually refine them a bit more. It's all a bit weird down here. But let's paint it in anyway. Yeah. Well, it's different. Um, and then I'm coming over here. Actually, I really like painting that on top. So I saw the painting is talking to me. So I'm just going to smooth this out a little bit, just moving the paint around. And I want to come back and maybe recreate things like that. Yeah. So a bit more yellow and a bit more white. Yeah, it's gone green on me. And I want to plonk that in and then maybe paint the red on top because I really like how it worked over there. 
Ooh. And I'm just plonking it on and seeing what happens, realising, of course, I can come back for a second coat. Which I will probably have to. <coughs> Maybe a bit more red there. Ooh, paint's getting really thick, but yeah, that works. So I suppose this is a kind of lesson that will get you used to the idea of your painting talking to you. So as you're doing something that's a little bit odd, you can see areas that you like. So I really like that. Um, it's quite a useful skill to develop when you're doing watercolour, because watercolours never do what you want them to anyway, is to let the painting talk to you. So, hmm. Right. And also, I also like uh, paintings that have, do have this strong black line. I'm trying to think of who does it. But, uh, no, I can't think of anybody at the moment. Uh, but that uh, these strong black lines will poke through and add something to your painting. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to choose a slightly different brush, a slightly bigger brush. I always like to use flat brushes as a rule because I like the marks they make. Um, so I'm just going to do what I'm going to call the first coat on this bit. Because I think, oh, I don't know, that is really not bad. So I'm going to, oh no, it is getting thinner. Because I know this is not terribly thick. Um, these cheap, I think this was white from Sea Whites. Oh damn, is that still wet? That's still wet. So this is my first coat. And I'm putting on it quite thickly because I do want that coverage power to start with. And the paint is still wet. And I can come down here. Yeah, that's better. It's dry there. So I do want to smooth it out a little bit. Hey, I might as well go over the whole thing. Okay, so that's our white bit, and that's the first coat. And then I just want to have a look at the edges here. Just trying to smooth out my brush strokes a little bit. Plonk, plonk, plonk. And then, ooh, I should go in here. Oops. Okay, so yes, I'm just going to think of this as the first coat, it's probably the best. And then I've got uh, this shiny green ball, um, and I think this green is a bit too livid, this is the phthalo green. So I'm just going to add a little bit of brown to that, just to knock it back a bit, and paint that on, Ooh, green on red. Ah, still wet. Ooh. And again, getting the painting talking to me, because I kind of like that bit. So, you know, you get these happy accidents, which turn out to be um, <coughs> useful. So I'm just going to leave that there. Am I? Am I? Am I? No, I want that line to be more ah, fiddling. Boo! Like that. <laughs> and I think I'm probably going to need to change my water in a minute, but. And then I probably want to do the curtain, because uh, then I can paint the things on top. So I'm just looking at it, basically it's just bands of blue, so I'm just going to take my blue and put a band of blue in, which is sort of here, and then that goes over here. And I'm just encouraging you to paint quite quickly, because A, we can do a second coat, and B, um, you become more spontaneous. So if I start looking at every little indentation on that rock, uh, you really start to freeze up, I think. 
and you want to be quite free at this stage and probably during the whole thing now I think about it yeah there, that's there that's there oh there's some over here let's put some of that blue in there I realize I've squeezed out far too much paint again and that is more or less drying but I think I am going to have to resort to the hair dryer uh, because you need uh, areas to be dry before you apply any more paint. Okay, while well, I was trying to dry this bit, I was making nice textures with my fingers, which worked really well. So I might try and remember that I did that and actually continue on because that's getting some really nice textures in there. Mm. Right, and then that's all more or less dry. I do want to put this white in because everything's kind of blasting red at us. And I do want to put that little bit of white in uh, so it won't seem so uh, red. <laughs> but the reason I choose red is actually because uh, you have to really fight against it. And um, it uh, also, if you have bits showing through, uh, I learnt from some, was it de Kooning's agent? Red cells! So, red cells. And dust in there. Ooh, that's my posh white. That's very nice. Like that. So I just want to get that stripe. It sort of adds dynamism to the thing, what you're doing. And there's some down here. Some over there. And some over here. Well, I must say this posh white is much better than the other. It's got good covering power. And see what I want to do. Hmm. So while I've got it on my brush, I might slap a bit more on here. So second coat of uh, my white on here. Luckily, it's dry now, but so I'm doing a second coat of the white pebble because I do want to have that as a nice white space in uh, the painting. And there's a lump over there. Eek! There's a lump there. Lump, lump, lump. There we go. So this is uh, kind of watching paint dry. I'm just adding a second coat. I'm doing that so I can actually develop it a bit further because it's got those nice weird holes in it and everything. Ah, I've just found a bit of wet paint. Curses. And over here. So I'm just going to leave that because I did like that line I got with the glass thing. And then I'm going to come down here and think about what I want to do with these things. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I do like this because it's kind of echoing that. Uh, so I do like that colour. So I might try and build up an orange. Ooh. There we go. That orange enough. I think I want a bit more red in there. And possibly a bit more white. Hmm. Hmm. I think I want a bit more red. It's going to go pink on me. Let's have some more yellow. Okay. Let's try that. So I've got this kind of warm brick. So I'm just going to paint the whole thing this orange. Oops. Is that some of that red still wet? <clears throat> and then. Hmm. We've got this thing, which is kind of pale yellow. So maybe if I vary, uh, vary that theme, so I've got what was on my brush. I'm going to add a bit more white. Ooh, and a bit more yellow. And a bit more yellow. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go with that one, which is kind of similar, but not the same. More yellow. Here's my underpainting. I wonder if I should take that up a bit. And it might need a second coat. 
Oh, and there's a kind of reddish one over here. I'm going to make that a bit redder. And we'll call that a reddish one, which is more or less the same colour as the background. Maybe we'll add a bit more yellow to it. There we go. And then, clean my brush, we'll possibly get a new one. Hmm, I am going to do that one. And if I make it blue, I think it's going to look too odd. So, I am going to uh, make it a blue-grey. <laughs> actually helpfully so I'm just going to use a bit of blue and a bit of black and a bit of white so what I'm finding I'm doing I'm using this cheaper white to be the mixing white and my posh white to be white um, and generally as a rule of thumb you want uh, titanium white if you want something to be white uh, get titanium white noils or acrylics it's the whitest white and generally zinc white and other kinds of white are generally uh, <coughs> oh, that's come out well um, <coughs> uh, not as white right oh now I've got that one to do and the shell hmm. so you can see this is more or less an undercoat there will be refinement coming I think I'm sure so I've got this pebble here, which again is sort of a warm brown grey. So I'm probably going to use this colour. Oh dear, that's too wet. And a bit more yellow. And then yeah, add a bit of grey, see what happens. Whoa, it's gone green. Hmm. All right, so it's just a shape falling out of the frame. Ooh. My brush wasn't dry, so I've actually got too much water sloshing around there. And then we've got this little shell, which is a pain in the neck, but it's a nice little shape. So I'm going to treat it as a sort of a cone. I think, and again, a nice subtle. Oh, I got my, love, my yellow ochre. I can't resist it. I'm going to open up my yellow ochre. This is the last I have in the house. And add a bit of white to that and paint this in. And I'll just try to treat it as a general shape to start with. I'm not worry about the fact it's a shell. I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow ochre to that because I didn't like that colour at all. See, uh, you could kind of sell that as an abstract. Uh, I'm just thinking that with abstracts as well, you can turn them round. Ooh, what do you think of that? Looks like jelly beans. More like that. Or like this. Or back to the start. You can also, I'm just looking at the, these shapes, and I didn't know this was going to happen, uh, uh, that these shapes are rather groovy. Yeah. So we're sort of there, which is fine. And then there. Aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And then when it works, it is probably because it's following the rule of three. I think it's best not to think about the rule of three, but uh, just to know that when it works, it's there. When you start getting mathematical and art together, maths and art together, people go insane. I'm going to use this red, but to make it lighter, I'm going to put a bit of yellow in it. Not white, because that turns it pink, although it's going a bit horribly pink. And I just want to add a little bit lighter red in there. And actually go around here. My nice, ooh, I'm getting, ooh, that's nice, that's nice. Like that. So I'm just adding bits here and there, and then finding, oh, this could be a good technique. If 
finding the kind of, well it's not rust, I don't know what it is, uh, <coughs> something or other, underneath. I mean leaving it, it is underneath and I'm, I'm leaving the shapes I made with the grey. And you can see it's coming to life a little bit. And here where I left, put a bit of shadow in, um, I'm going to leave that and not paint over that bit because it's darker. And then over here, my lovely texture. Oh, that's marbling the brush on. And over here, so again, I do want that lighter area. And up here. And I might go back. I want, it's uh, waiting for things to dry. And with acrylics, they do generally dry pretty quickly. And I'm just going to go over with my finger just to create that nice sort of texture that I liked uh, when I did it sort of by mistake earlier. Finger painting! Mind you, it's nothing new. Titian, towards the end of his life, he ended up living to a ripe old age. He was finger painting. And you can definitely see it in some of um, the later works in the National Gallery. I think he was 86 when he died or something. I just want to have some lighter areas there. And I'm having a bit of a, a bash around with this thing. This is working, this is good. Making some nice texture. Mm -hmm. And I suppose uh, the advantage of trying to think about becoming a little bit more abstract or trying to uh, use the idea of uh, abstracting natural forms in your own work. Apparently um, people like art where they have to put a bit of work in. When you've got hyper photorealist painting it's all a bit dull really. <clears throat> Just shows how, art, uh, how clever the artist is. But um, it's done from a photograph. Why don't you use a photograph? <clears throat> so if you can have some amb ambiguity in your painting it makes people appreciate it more apparently. I think that was proved as a scientific fact. Oh, oh. Right, <clears throat> I think I, I will be adding more texture here, but I want that red to dry. <clears throat> so I'm heading towards doing this thing. That's the tricky one. And I'm going to use a small round brush, I think. Just making sure my brushes are clean because they've got pink on them. And that will always come through. <clears throat> so I'm using this small round brush Yes, my round brush. And I'm going to have a bit of that yellow ochre and a bit of brown and black. See, I'm getting realist now. But I do want to have the idea of those shapes. So I'm just picking that up. So that's one. There's one here. And I'm not worrying about it because I'm going to be adding more to it, but I just want to kind of place them. Uh, one over here, which is a bit darker. Just going to have a bit more black going on in that one. And maybe in that one a bit. In that one a bit. And where am I going to put it? And then one over here, pick up something lighter there, in here, and people are going to think, ooh, what's that? And one here, and then one over there, and one here, and there, one here, one here. One there. Oh, there's a hole there. Oh, no, never mind. Ah, by looking you see. And then there's something going on up there. <clears throat> now I want to refine those a bit. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm sort of thinking on the hoof here, <clears throat> is actually use black initially. Mm -hmm. So just here and actually describe the shape in black because I did say I did like those black outlines and if it doesn't work I'll always paint over them so again here like 
back the plane to it. And where have we got? We here. And then there. And then one here. So I'm getting those black shapes, which they could have been completely random, come out of my mind, but in fact they're on this rock. Uh, ooh, there's one there. So I've got these <coughs> big black shapes. And now I'm going to start adding more and more white to that, but I do want it to be warm too. That's my yellow ochre. So I'm going to have a bit of yellow ochre going on. And a bit of this white. I'm actually really try and keep that separate. And then I'm going to make up a tone. So I'm going a warm tone of black by adding yellow ochre. And then I'm going in here. Apart from that, it's still wet. Going in here and putting my next tone on. In there. Oh, damn, I need for it to dry. <coughs> dry. Okay, let's have a bit more white knocking around. And again, I'm mixing up another tone. More or less the same colour. I'm just going to keep it simple. Oh, oh gosh, that was all too wet. Keep it simple. And over here. So this is my third tone. But the paint is still wet, so I might leave some of that. I'll be touching that up in a minute, and I want that to be darker and that to be lighter. Woo! Interesting. Um, and then over here, I want that area to be a bit lighter, but the paint was wet, so it was mixing in with itself. Ah! So a bit of that going on. Well, I'm sure I've seen that on a gallery wall. <laughs> what irritates me uh, a lot about a lot of the artists um, is uh, a lot of the modern artists, the very modern artists, is they can't paint well. That really irritates me. Oh. Not like Picasso, who could draw and paint beautifully, but chose not to. <clears throat> I think I might, while I'm here, and I'm letting the painting talk to me, I'm just going to beef up that black edge, because it's kind of disappeared over there. I do like that black edge. So I'm just using my round brush. Mm. And some black paint, and I just want to make that edge really quite dark. Mm. Ha! Now, am I going to make it a little bit more three-dimensional? So what I can do is I'm just going to mix up a tone of white, ho-ho, uh, a bit of that and a bit of that, and some of this, and I'm just going to make this area a little bit darker. Just a little bit. Eh? Maybe in there. And over here. Oops, oh damn, picked up some black curses. And over here. And just to have, not have everything just bright white, I'm just going in here and trying to Well, I'll almost put some shadows in, but almost put some shadows in. Now, that's got a bit too dark, so I'm just going to pick up some white and add it here to soften that edge. I think Ooh, that needed bucking up anyway. And let's have a bit more white here too. vary my brush stroke. So here I'm doing a wiggle, and before I was doing a dab. Oh, actually, I'm like that. 
And this is coming over here. Oops, and that is darker, but not quite that dark. There we go. Oop, and down here. Now I'm getting I'm getting very high bound in the real life of it all. But I will persist actually. I'm just gonna add a little bit more white to this grey I've got going on and plonk it around here. Ooh. Mm. So I'm just having little dabby strokes, not to make it all just one big area of white. And uh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Let's see if that works. Oh yes, that's better. And there we go, me thinks. What does it look like? Huh, it looks like a rock we're holding. You see, I've gone realistic again. I just can't not do that. Hmm. <coughs> I'm just going to grab a bit of white here and I'm just going to almost like pointless strokes, just trying to bring up some of the lighter areas and calm down some of the uh, shadowy areas. Like I think this wants to be a bit whiter. And then, ooh, over here. So I suppose it is quite liberating thinking that you're not having to copy every little dimple on this rock, just taking inspiration from it. I just want to, yes, I'm just going to dab that away almost in a pointless style to make those edges not so harsh. Ew. See, now I'm fiddling. Yeah. I suppose you should quit while you're ahead. Uh, so I do want to just go in there. Tidy that up. Oh, I suppose I've got this big glass ball to think about. Although I really like that edge. <sighs> there is something happening in there, so I think I might try and tackle that next. Because that's rather a blank shape. But I don't want to go crazy now. So let's have a medium square brush, some of the phthalo green mixed with the brown. And then I'm going to throw some white at that and see what happens. Yeah, that's not bad. And I just want to have a light area in here. Maybe a bit of light over here. Because it's actually reflecting that mad ball. And then, I realise that's too light, so I'm just going to mix up a darker version of that. I think it seems so black because it's painted on red. <clears throat> so I'm just lightening that colour a little bit. Ooh, there's some red reflecting in there. I'll just add a bit of red. Ooh. And then... Hmm. Well, perhaps it was better when it was calmer. But I'm going to actually uh, mix up the, this dark green colour, which is the phthalo and the burnt umber. And I just want to go in there and add some calming influence of the darker green. Hmm. Yes, you often think in your brain, oh, that's going to be a good idea, but I think it was better before I started. Let's just leave that. Right. Hmm. So she saying, not listening to herself. I just want that dark. I want it to be really, really dark just there. Hmm. I'm, I'm getting, as soon as I start painting all 
yes, responding to something. I start trying to be realistic, but I don't want to be realistic. <clears throat> right. Let's put the dirty water away. I'm going to clean my brushes and think about tackling the material, the curtain underneath. Okay, I want to get this this stripy thing more defined and I am going to have to put a second coat on. So, find a decent brush. Hmm. Could be. Okay, so I'm going to pick up my posh white. I think it's a good uh, thing to invest in one posh white because then that will buck up all your other paints. But I do want to have this shape here. And I'm using this uh, long flat because I, I like the structural strokes it does, but you can also get reasonably detailed by using it sideways, as it were. That is a much better white. And then here, and I took away the wiggle, when did I do that? I might try and put it back, but simplified. So I just want to go in here and add that. Ooh. Oh, I seem to have made up a bit there, but let's put it in anyway. Hmm. That can go there. I think I might be going back and adding my black lines again, but Ooh, can I put some up here? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> sorry, I'm getting carried away here a bit. Definitely want some here. Um, it's only because I had it on my brush. Uh, and then over here, I suppose it's not as bright white, but I'm going to put bright white in and see what it looks like. And then <clears throat> there's a little bit here, and I think I might have to raise that. A little bit there. <clears throat> and a little bit over here. Woo! 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 Really right now, I think I want this to go up a bit further, in fact. And I will have to wait <coughs> for it to dry before I can do anything about uh, the blue. So, why don't we start thinking about <coughs> these pebbles? So, they have a bit of texture to them. <coughs> so, I'm adding, I'm taking my, uh, so I've got my red here. I'm, just the white I had on my brush. I'm adding quite a lot of yellow. In the vague hope it might become less pink, which I think it is sort of. And I just want to go in there. Oh no, I think I want it lighter. So I'm going to add some more yellow. <coughs> and plop it on. And then it's going down to a deeper colour, isn't it? So now I'm looking at it, which is annoying, uh, and realising I've got it sort of wrong. So if I take that as sort of my base colour of that thing, I might <coughs> get some deeper red out. Actually, this is still working, which it probably isn't. Oh, right, no, that's still on there. <clears throat> so that's a bit of, <clears throat> excuse me, Elysian Crimson, which I haven't picked up on the brush, perhaps I should clean my brush. Uh, that's Elysian Crimson. Ooh. Hmm. I'm going to add a bit of green to that to make it do something mad. Oh yeah, that's completely mad. Ew. That's a big mistake. Um, I'm just going to clean that brush, pick up that original colour, and plonk it in. 
So I added green to that deep red to knock it back, to make neutralise it and make the shadows. And in fact, some of the smaller areas of this are really nice. Doing greens and reds and all sorts of things happening. So I'm just plonking it on. I'm trying to almost stipple, I suppose, is the technical term. Stipple some in, and I might have a little bit over there. But that is a bit too realistic. So I'm going to clean my brush, dry my brush. So I can use straight from my picture. <clears throat> and I'm going to pick up this original colour of the red and the yellow and plonk it in. Ooh, and then now it's mixing. Oh, that's good. So it's not so peculiar. <clears throat> and again, I'm just kind of having a bit of a stipple to try and reflect the texture of that rock. It does look like an Easter egg. Yeah. <coughs> I think I might quit while I'm ahead on that one. Yes, and then we'll start thinking about doing this one. So again, clean my brush, dry my brush. And this is kind of a warm yellow. And again, it's sort of, I think, like that, but with more yellow involved. And quite a lot of yellow. Quite a lot of yellow. Hmm. That's too much yellow. I'm going to add some white to that. And I'm going to be reduced to using yellow ochre again. I know I am. I always find the ordinary yellows are quite... I don't know, acidic, yellow ochre is kind of more mellow. I'm just having a quick plonk around my yellower pebble with this colour. I take a little bit of that. Again, I could, oh no, no, it's terrible. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to use the brown. I'm going to mix the brown in with that sort of yellowy mix. Just to take it down and make it a bit warmer. We've got this funny indentation in the rock. And, ooh, I'm just adding, using this brown to be uh, sort of part of the texture and part of the shadow. And you can see the, <clears throat> the marks you make are affected by the brush you use. So, I think. I've got a sort of a knackered one here, which is quite splayed, a knackered round one. I'm going to pick up some of that yellow, with a bit of white mixed in. Ah! Well, there we go. And I'm having a nice time with my texture. So I can actually lighten that colour. And luckily this is all still wet, which is sort of good, I think. And I suppose this would inform a more realistic painting of it, in fact. I, I just can't resist it. I just have to go realist. I try and I try and it never works. Uh, so that is probably a bit light. So I want some more yellow going in there. Ooh. A bit more yellow. So that's kind of like a third tone. And there's something happening there as well. Mind you, you could spend a whole time uh, just painting a pebble, really, couldn't you? And this is my fourth tone, because it's just mixing in with the colours that are there. So a bit of yellow going on there. Oh, a bit of orange might work. A bit of orange. Okay. Oh dear. And now it looks realistic. I am hopeless. I just find it really hard to go abstract. It's more about the composition being abstract, I suppose. <clears throat> well, quit one, one, one's ahead, I think. Okay, so I'm going to look at this one now. And I did like that blue-gray. I'll make it green. Clean your brush, dry your brush. 
I think it's because I'm actually using the smaller brushes uh, that I'm get, I'm doing this being more textured. But I didn't want these great smooth shapes that I made before. So this is our second coat. Uh, so I'm making up this blue grey again. It was just black and the blue and white. Hmm. And I do want... That's better. Nice slate blue. Uh, maybe make it a bit bluer. No, don't make it a bit bluer. Make it a bit greyer. And again, it's because I'm using this brush, I'm tempted to do this, which I like. It's reflecting the texture of the pebbles, even though this is supposed to be abstract. <laughs> oh, I know it's got to do my abstracts. But it's nice having those different colours looking around. So I'm just adding a bit of black to my brush to have that. Yeah, oh, that was a mistake. Uh, <clears throat> to add these different textures. So again, I'm creating texture by using my brush like this. And. And while it's wet, I can kind of blend those colours. Or not. Yeah. And again, I think I will quit while I'm ahead. <clears throat> I do like uh, this shell. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna just gonna keep it that shape and really not worry about it being a shell because shells, as you know, are very hard to paint. So I'm just gonna have a bit of yellow ochre and white. And actually, pop that up there to indicate its general shape. So I don't want to do too much to it. Just have it as this kind of cone, cone type shape. And then, ooh, let's have a bit of grey, shall we? Oh, I'm going realistic again. That is. And then, it's got that lovely reflective light. Am I going to do that? Probably. So it's got this nice pinkiness here. Ooh. No, that's horrible. Uh, so I'm just going to go in here. Hmm. And a bit more yellow over and white. So I'm just going to leave that. So when I've got a nice shape, which I think that is almost, I'm going to leave it alone. Oh, it looks like an ice cream cone. <clears throat> and then we have this shape here. <sighs> which is sort of brown. So I'm going to take some brown, mix it into something I've got going on here. Oh, that's pretty good. And plonk that on. And then it's got little ah, black bits. And again, I'm doing this because I happen to be using this brush. And it's good for doing that. Maybe I'm going to add a little bit of white to my mixture just to give it a third tone. Oh. Right, I'm trying to think what's dry and what isn't. Oh, I could go do this. Well, I've got this colour on my brush, which is ideal. I just want to go in here and blob around here to have this, I don't know what it is, lichen or anti-fouling or something. Yeah. Ah, you see now it's <laughs> it's making the marks of the brush. So I'm actually going to use my finger and spread it out a bit. Ooh, that's fun, like that. Well, in fact, now it all looks like my finger. Uh, and then I'm going to mix up some grey. I think that's what it needs. So probably a warm grey, uh, grey uh, sort of black and white, with probably a little bit of the brown in there to warm it up a little bit. Let's see what happens when I do that. Ooh, that's good. I know. Well, I'm standing here 
doing this. I was just thinking, if I attacked it with a pallet knife, what would happen? I need that to be, oops. A little bit more, ah, there we go. Ah, look, a technique, finger painting. Yes, I like that. So smudging around. And maybe having a bit of the black and brown. There's something happening here. No, no, don't like that. Ha ha, finger painting. <clears throat> Maybe I need a bit of it up there. That's the burning question. And then so some of the lighter areas. Ah, so I want some of this. This is uh, Unloved Pebble, uh, which again is sort of orange, so I'm going to mix up an orange. Uh, <clears throat> there, that and that. Yeah, more yellow. And I want that to be quite thick. And I think what I am going to do is actually go around the whole area with... Uh, a black line again because I've lost most of my black line and I do like my black line but I have to wait for that to dry Ooh. <clears throat> and then here that's the wet yeah, sort of. I'm just going to take this over to a mirror and have a look at it because I'm so close to it now and I'm still finding that really quite annoying <clears throat> Hmm. Yes, having sort of been in love with it, I'm now not in love with it anymore. So what I'm going to do here is actually put a black line around it <clears throat> because I was trying to think of it being realistic and it's not realistic. It shouldn't be realistic. It should be well, almost graphic, I suppose. So I'm just going to take the black. Oops. Oh, there we go. That's better. And then I just want to reestablish some of this black line here. Hmm. And have some over here. Hmm. Front back, front back. Let's do the front one first, shall we? Probably that it's still wet. And over here. Ooh, yes, this is this needs a black line, doesn't it? And that goes down there. And yes, I think I do prefer the black line. It's <clears throat> taking me away from reality, which obviously I have a hard time doing. And then there. And here. Ooh, that's still a bit wet, but I do want it there. 
Oh dear. <clears throat> I've gone all realistic. <laughs> more than my texture and everything. But it's more about learning how to take small elements of something that inspires you and uh, run with it <clears throat> by letting bits fall out of the frame and why you find you like a particular composition and not another composition. <sighs> Ding you. There's a few finishing touches to do. There's this nice circle on here. See, I went realistic. Why did I go realistic? <clears throat> but I am going to put the circle on. Which again is just, this is just white. Which will now turn grey. And... Hmm. I'm just assessing my painting now, but I don't know whether or not to do any more to it. So here we are uh, with the finished painting, and I'm not going to touch this anymore. What I found, and this is a failing that I have, is I went too realistic. But I did find that if you kind of turn it round, you're getting away from the reality. Yeah, I don't know, that could be good. <clears throat> but in fact, I think that's probably the best one. So I could call that an abstract painting. And then, probably what I would do if I was doing a proper abstract painting, <clears throat> is do something called creative cropping. Uh, so you can have these uh, bits of cardboard, uh, just an old mount board cut into, to be your frame and I think that is better actually oh yeah that's better that works so um, it's just a bit of fun really and if you want to learn how to probably be abstract find someone who actually does it and I really don't do it and I don't find it easy to do but actually that composition I think could work okay I uh, hope to see you all soon and um, keep painting